Okay, so today what I want to talk about is how to create and control remote GitHub repos the same way you do with local repos. And we're going to do this by using this great tool called Hub. Now this was built by GitHub and it's a way that you can run commands the same way as if you went to the actual website. So we're going to be building this repo right here. So git-hub-create. It doesn't exist right now. So we're going to use this tool, which I've already installed, to be able to manage our repo remote or locally and then also create it remotely and push things up. And it's going to do it very efficiently. Um, so if you want to install this, if you're on Mac OS or Linux, it's quite easy with Homebrew. Brew install hub is all you have to do. If you're using one of the other tools, we can click on the link here or go to the GitHub repo. It's the same place. And there's the section in the readme on installation and it lists off, okay, depending on which thing you've got installed, here's all your options for installing it. Okay, so once we have this, now the man hub, this is the, uh, the manual for it. You can see there's a whole bunch of commands that we get. Now, the first bunch, extended git commands, these are things that you can already do with git, although they may have a simplified version where you run one command and give it some options instead of running multiple commands. But the ones that really give it some power, the ones that I really like are these new ones. And inside here, hub browse. You want to open up a repo? You can be inside of a local repo and type hub browse. It's going to open up the browser and navigate to your repo. Hub create. We're going to do that one in a moment. This is once you have a local repo built, you can use this one command and it's going to remotely create the repo and set up your um, Git remote settings. So it's automatically connected to that. We're going to do delete as well. This is going to let us remotely delete a re repo. Uh, if you're working with code gists, you can use hub gist and that's going to let you create or view gists from your account. Uh, you can look at issues, releases, so you can look at the wikis. There's all kinds of really cool stuff that we can do. So I'm going to give the basics here. I have a folder. I've got a couple of empty folders, CSS and JS. I've got an index.html. I created a gitignore file. That's all I've got inside of here. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add to this in my CSS and JS folder something that Git does when you're loading stuff to GitHub, when you're uploading. If you've got an empty folder, that empty folder doesn't get put on the server. You have to have something inside the folder for that to work, for it to actually upload this and save the fact that the server's there, or the folder is there. Now, if I don't have a file yet, but I'm going to have a file, maybe there's a, a folder where I'm going to be uploading files later on, but I want to keep the folder there for everything to work. So to do this, we need to put something inside but what we're going to do, this isn't something that's built into Git. This is just sort of a convention that people have been following for a while. If you create a file called git keep, nothing inside of it. It's just an empty file. So there it is, git keep. Just create the file, nothing inside of it. That now means that you've met the condition of having something inside that folder. It doesn't have to be called git keep. This is just the convention that people have followed. Um, Starts with a period, meaning, okay, it's a settings file and there's no content, so it's zero file size, but it will keep the folder there. And that's the important part for us. All right, so I've got this. Now I'm going to initialize this. I'll do a git init. I've created my local repo. Everything is untracked changes right now. Okay, great. I will add all my files. We'll call git add. Everything has been added to my repo. So the repo is now tracking all these files. We'll add our initial commit. There we are. Now, everything is now part of my repo. Everything has been committed to my repo. We can do git status to make sure that we've got everything. Yep, nothing to commit, working tree clean. We could do a git log to take a look at everything. We've only got that one commit. Um, if you ever do a git log and you're not sure how to get out of here in this text editor, if you hit the colon, that's this character right here, you hit the colon and then Q is for quit. There we go. Now we're back into our regular terminal. All right. So we're ready now to push this up to GitHub, but we haven't added the remote. So we haven't done our git remote add yet. We haven't done git push yet. And 
we haven't gone over to GitHub to create this. So I refresh this, you can see, okay, GitHub create does not exist. This repo is not there yet, but I want to create it, but I'd like to do it with one single command without having to open up the browser and go over there. And that's where this hub comes in. So hub create will look at the name of your folder. It looks at the fact that it's a Git repo, says, okay, I'm gonna go talk to GitHub on your behalf using your account credentials, and I'm going to create this repo, and then I'm gonna update your remote settings to connect it. This is all we have to do, hub create. And now I've got a link here. I could hit command click to open it, but since I already have it open here, I'll just hit refresh. There it is, it has been created for us. And the remote settings are there too. If I do git remote dash V, it'll give me the information. So yeah, it's ready to go. So I can do git push and we'll say origin main. There we go. We have pushed it up. So I get git init, git add, git commit, hub create, git push. Five commands on the command line. And I have got all of my content here and my empty folders, my CSS and JS folders, those are now there as well. Now I'm using SSH to do this. In my git config file, here's my git config file. Inside of here, I've got a whole bunch of settings and at the bottom, there's a section for hub and the protocol is set to SSH. That's what I'm using. Now there's other choices. You can use HTTPS here instead. And there's a note, I believe back here on the, yeah, right here. So if you want to change it to use HTTPS, this command right here, git config global hub dot protocol HTTPS, that's going to change this line inside of here, protocol equals HTTPS. Then it's going to be username and password that get used same as if that's what you're using for all your Git commands. But I recommend that you switch over to using SSH. Um, I've got another video linked to there. Um, shows you how to set up the SSH keys for GitHub. I'm going to use SSH as well. So I've got the protocol set to SSH in here. And that means when I do my Git remote dash V, you can see it starts off with git at github.com colon and then username and then the repo name. So I'm using a different one. It doesn't start with HTTPS with the, the GitHub because I've got SSH. If you're going to do this, then in GitHub, you will have to set up a personal access token. So in GitHub, if you come in here, if you go down into settings and then into developer settings, so settings, developer settings, and then go to personal access tokens. You can create tokens here and create one that hub can use. And there's some more instructions about that if you need them here too. Okay, so we have this, we've created it. We've used hub to do that, uh, to create the repo, to push things up. If you want to delete, that'll be the last command that I show you guys here. So I can do hub delete and for this one, I do need to provide the username and the repo name. So I'm going to delete Professor Steve slash GitHub create. That's the name of my repo. Really delete it. And you have to type the word yes. There we go. It has now been deleted. I didn't have to go to GitHub and do anything. I can just manage it entirely from here. Same way I can clone repos using hub. I can do hub clone, hub fork. Um, really, a lot of really cool stuff. So there it is, it's gone now. Okay, so I hope that helps you get a little bit uh, faster at creating repos using this hub tool. I highly recommend it. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I'll answer what I have time for. And as always, thanks for watching.